everyone. Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Had a really interesting question a few weeks ago sent to me by Jerry. And it's about copyright and whether or not we should be holding our digital files hostage and keeping them from clients. I'm going to break this down kind of question by question and piece by piece and answer it and um, basically go over it from my perspective on what I think we as photographers should do basically to maximize the amount of money that we're making so that we can continue what we love, which is photography. So um, let's get into it here. Uh, I'm going to skip down here. What's your stance on copyright and why? I wish there was more copyright and more laws that actually help us and protect us. Um, the lawmakers only will help us so much. We only have so big of a lobby. Uh, so that's why ASMP and um, uh, all the other, I forget some of the other associations that are out there helping us, PPA that are, that are professional photographers of America. You know, that lobby is only so big versus, you know, TV studios and everybody else are probably on kind of on the other side as far as photography is concerned. So um, we can only do so much. And the only thing we can do is just keep trying and do, you know, do our best here. Uh, I'm writing a perspective of the customer, the client. In commercial photography, the client contracts and receives the images and the copyright. Stop. He says images and copyright. Typically, at least the way my contracts are written, the client never receives the copyright. The client will receive usage rights, and that's it. There's a, there's a huge difference in between owning the copyright to an image and uh, having usage rights, okay? We as, let's, let's talk about the music industry, for example, okay? We as uh, people that listen to music Okay, we're allowed to use that music. We do not own the copyright to that music. So, um, unfortunately, Jerry, you're just a touch off on this, unless your contracts are, are written differently or someone else's contracts are written differently, where that copyright is being transferred from the original owner, which is the photographer, to the new owner, which is the client, then you still own that copyright if it's unwritten if it does not say that, that copyright is being transferred then you still own that copyright as the photographer or the creator of that image all right so um yeah they're going to receive the images of course they need it for commercial use but um anyway uh, i think i went over that um in con i in i guess supposed to say in eye contrast wedding photographers hold hostage images from one of the most intimate Emotional mo events of a couple's life. We do because we need to make money from it. Um, if the photographer doesn't hold on to those images, if they just hand everything over, they have a lesser chance of being able to make money from that. And so why would we just hand that over willy-nilly? You know, we need to get paid for it. Our equipment costs money. Our insurance costs money. Our buildings, our, um, you know, everything that we do costs money. Why are we just going to hand it over like it costs nothing? You know, over the last five or ten years, there's been such a huge influx of photographers that are out on the market. It's already driven the price of photography, wedding photography, commercial photography, way down to a bare minimum just because there are so many people out there, whether or not they call themselves a pro or not, or if it's just Joe Schmo that, that happened to buy a nice camera for his wife for a, a, a gift. You know, uh, you know, instead of going out and hiring a photographer, you know, Sally, the the um, the person that works in the front office, says, "Oh yeah, I have a nice camera. I can take that picture for you, no problem." So there's a huge influx of all these extra people that supply and demand. You know, there's a there's a very low demand for it, but there's a very high supply of it. That means it's going to drive the prices down, and that's what's happened over the last say five to ten years as far as. Um, photography is concerned and the pricing of it whether they're talking weddings whether we're talking commercial everything has come down uh in that amount of time um let's see where were we um why is my question understanding in prior digital advances of the photographer holding the negatives made sense because they had held the technical technological knowledge necessary to turn the negatives into photographs yep okay 
Easy enough. Send out the lab, get printed. Yeah, anybody could kind of do that way back when. It really wasn't a big deal. Um, this is clearly not the case anymore. Stop. It is still the case. Um, and I'm going to keep reading here. Each year, advances are made in the processing of raw files, yet the customer's originals are unavailable. But here's the thing. People may be able to process it. Number one, they're probably not going to purchase the right software. Number two, they're not going to process it the way us, the photographer, was getting paid to, uh, to produce an image. Okay, We're getting paid not only to have the equipment, the knowledge, the skill, but also the vision to create what the client wants. If we're not doing that, then we shouldn't be in the business. But we're producing this and in order for us to make money from this and to feed our families and to pay the bills and keep the lights on and put food on the table we still need to be holding on to our digital files whenever possible all right commercial clients they expect to get a digital file that's normal it's the way it's been for years and years 15 years you know, even before, you know, you're always going to, going to get a proof print or something to be given to those clients or when you were just scanning a negative, you know, way back when. So that's normal. But as far as wedding photography is concerned, I do my best not to give out any kind of digital files. The same with my portrait photography. In my opinion, I would much rather give them a higher quality print, a higher quality product, rather than just hand out digital files that they're going to go to CVS and get some crappy print that, you know, some 18 year old kid just throws it on a machine and the chemicals are all out of whack or, you know, maybe it's an inkjet printer that they have at home with some crappy paper that they're going to print it on. You know, if I'm not able to control that final output, that means that no matter how much time I spent putting into that digital file, that picture that I created and that I spent the last 15 years developing my style and my clientele and my everything they're just going to ruin that by putting it on a sheet of copy paper so that's why we hold on to our images that's why we need to keep on holding on to our images and that's why we need to keep driving that price of photography back up to where it was five years ago eight years ago all right we need to be holding on to more of our images instead of just throwing them all on a disc and toss them to the client and going on to the next one, spend a little bit more time with it. Get a, uh, sell them an album, sell them a better quality print, find a better lab, go get a local framer and get the whole thing framed. You're able to make more money, you're able to get a, uh, produce a better product, and you're going to create a long-term relationship with that client rather than just in and out, wham, bam, and done. So this is my perspective on this. I strongly suggest if you're considered, considering going pro, or already a pro and not doing this to switch over to this model inch your prices up a little bit every year and start holding on to more of your digital files I will never mark my words on this I will never produce and have never produced a negative file a raw file for a client I've never given a raw file to a client period and I never will here's the reason if I give them that raw file, that raw file is unprocessed, just like a negative was. Okay, completely unprocessed, completely unedited, untouched. That means that to me, that image is not finished. It's only halfway done. So we need, I need to finish that file. Whether I provide an XMP file or not, that's a whole other thing. I don't care what graphic designer tells me, oh, I need a raw file. And I'll just say, no, you don't. I only provide TIFF files at the highest resolution possible. If you really need to see the layers that I edited, then I'll give you a TIFF file with layers. But for most clients, if it's commercial or uh, uh, say a client that you know has say getting a headshot done or something like that, I'm just providing a high res or a medium or low res JPEG, depending upon what they're doing with it in the long run. If they're just just need a headshot for the web, for their Facebook page, for their LinkedIn you know, for their website, stuff like that, not a big deal. You know, give them a low res file, maybe give them a medium one if they need to get it printed sometime, and it's plenty. But as far as, you know, family portraits, um, wedding work, uh, any kind of personal, what I call retail work, retail portraiture, those things, you need to hold on to those. You should never be giving out your raw files. 
you shouldn't be shooting only JPEG files. I would hope nobody is doing that anymore at this point in time. Um, but of course, I'm sure there's still plenty of people that, that don't quite see the advantages of shooting raw. But you need to be holding on to those files so that you can make money. Um, if you're, you know, if you're not taking advantage of, of, of those files and those methods to make money, then just start researching it. Talk to other photographers. Go to some events that are out there. Um, post on my forum, ask questions. You know, those are all things that ways that you can learn, ways that you can improve, ways that you can make more money. And, um, you know, it's important that, uh, for us to do that. So it really is, to answer your question, Jerry, it's all coming down to the ability for a photographer to make money and to feed his family and to keep on going with his hobby that he turned into a profession. So um, I hope you understand that, Jerry. Um, you know, I'm sure you have a job, whether you're a photographer or not. I don't know, but I'm sure you probably have a job. Um, you know, it's like, say you had a job and you relied on your overtime all all the time. You know, then all of a sudden the the employer says, nope, no more overtime for anybody in the company. That's it. We're done. No more overtime. Well, you're gonna have to start thinking about getting a different job. Well, it's the same thing for us. You know, those extra add-ons, those extra prints, a 16 by 20, a 20 by 30, maybe a canvas or a frame or an album or something like that, you know, that's the overtime for us. That's the extra little bit that allows us to, you know, maybe take a break, take a vacation or, um, you know, buy another vehicle or get better insurance or replace a camera or get something fixed or, um, you know, get the new computer we've been wanting for the last four years or five years. You know, those are the things that we still need to do as photographers and as professional photographers. So let's hold on to this. This is actually my kind of call for everyone to hold on to your digital files. Don't be sending them out just willy-nilly. And um, if you are sending them out, make sure you're charging for them and charging a premium for them. All right. I charge a lot of money for digital files from a, from a wedding. That's just the way that I do it because I know that I'm going to be losing that money from prints and other things. And I tell, I tell the clients right up front, you know, you're probably going to spend less money by just ordering prints from me than you will by ordering the digital files. And that's the truth. I will spend, it's usually double the amount of money when somebody asks for a set of digital files versus just a set of prints for a wedding or for a portrait session. That's what I do. That's how I'm able to make more money and keep on doing this. And of course, keep on making videos for you guys. So um, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of comments, plenty of discussion. I'm sure this is going to be a pretty, um, I don't know what the word is, pretty controversial post. I know I've had a lot of those lately, but uh, I really want to hear what you guys think, especially the pros out there, as well as anyone who's not a pro. You know, do you really, th has the value of photography really come down so far that we should now be just giving everything away just because a digital camera you can get a digital camera for you know for five hundred dollars with a cheap crap lens you know that's that shouldn't be the case you need to be paying not only for that camera you need to be paying for the skill of the photographer and that's one thing that many people don't understand and that many beginning photographers forget so um yeah, let, let's get a good discussion going. Any questions, comments, concerns, send them over. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Hold on to your photos and keep shooting. Thanks, guys. See you.